Hello guys, welcome back to our introduction to program with Python series. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn about the uh, how scopes work in Python. So uh, sometimes you might have code and that's the way the code executes might be a bit difficult. So for example, difficult to understand basically that's what I mean. So for example, I have this code right here. So let me just run this code. Uh, just before I run the code, what do you think the output of Y is going to be? So let me just go ahead and simply say print Y. And I'm also going to go ahead and call this function right here. So function right here. So I'm, I'm calling the function, uh, this function called func, and I'm also printing y. So what do you think the outputs outputs are going to be? So you can pause the video and just think about it for a while. What do you think the output is going to be? If I say print y on line, in line 7, what's going to be the output? And if I call this function, what's going to be the output? Because this function is also printing y. So which y is it going to print? Is it going to print global y or local y? So which y is going to be printed? Okay, so let's just go ahead and pause the video and think about it a bit. So once you're done, let me just go ahead and run the code and see what we get. So, so let me just go ahead and run the code. So I'm in my VS code right now. I'm just going to do uh, an LS is equivalence on DI on, on Windows. So I'm going to change my directory into my basic folder. And I'm going to run this file. This is going to be, uh, this is Python. Let me just check the name of the file. And this is 20, uh, 26, right? So Python 3 and then part, uh, this will be 26.py and then auto complete that. So if I run it, you see we get global Y and local y so why do we get that so the first print statement which it did print it printed out global y and if you call the function it returns to us local y so why did it return local y in the first instance so in the first instance of printing y and return local y uh, which is this y variable when calling the function so how does this work and how do you understand which y is going to be called in which case right those are called scopes in python so depending on the scope the variable that will be used is different right so uh, this may be a bit confusing to some of you guys because like you think that okay if i say print y then this y is going to be printed and if i call this function you probably think this would be printed right so another person it might make complete sense to you that uh what this is the code output is this way but uh, for you for us to understand this let's actually look at what are scopes in python okay so as uh, is uh, the first you have to understand scopes in python so uh, let me just go ahead and create another variable i'm going to create another variable called uh, y so i'm just going to go ahead and get rid uh, let me just uh, comment this out for now so i'm going to have another function down here i'm going to have x it's going to be of type a string right x is going to be a string and it's going to be let me just say uh global so global uh let me get this global y okay sorry global x i'm going to have a function here called func and this function what is going to go ahead and do is just in print and i'm going to go ahead and simply print x so once I do this, uh, let me just uh, go ahead and call this function. So I'm going to go ahead and say print x and I'm going to go ahead and call the function func. So what do you think the output of this code is going to be? So if, if I run this function, what do you think? If I run this code, what do you think the output is going to be? So let me just go into terminal and I run the code again. Now you can see global y and global x. Okay. So this works as we expected, right? So how, why, why does this time it, it uses global x right this is global x and in, in the first round it uses the local y whenever you call the function so why is that the case and how can we understand this more so to understand this there's a very simple rule in python uh, when you're dealing with scopes in python so there is it's called the l l uh, l e g b rule in python l e g b scope rule in python so uh there's a the l stands for the local scope the e stands for the enclosing scope and then the g stands for the global scope and then finally the b stands for the built-in scope okay so whenever python wants to execute a code uh, execute code it follows this order so let's start with the global global scope so global scope within a given uh scope within a given block of code like within a function that's called a global scope a local scope uh, sorry globe sorry that's a local scope rather so a global scope is anything that is outside of a, a given block of code it's called a global scope and then you also have the enclosing scope which will, uh, i'll explain to you later on uh, in depth and then you also have the built-in scope uh, which is also a bit different i'll explain also that later on so for let me just go back into my vs code and let me just explain it to using the lgb uh lgb rule so i'm going to sort l l e g b rule okay l e g b not l g b rule so l e g b rule okay so the first one uh, let me just go ahead and explain to you how l g b l e g b rule can be used to explain how this function work okay so uh let me just go ahead and uh, comment this part of the code and let's focus on just this section of the code so we are calling this let me just call the function first let's have the function call and then finally we have the print statement right here okay so we have the function call right here and this function called we are calling this function right here so we are calling the function and it's going in here and you're saying you're just printing out y so what it's going to do is going to start from the local scope it's going to look for y within the local scope and we say that a local a local scope 
it just uh, uh, any variable within the local scope is within a block of code like a function right so it's going to look within this block of code right this block of code and it's going to look for y inside of this block of code because it's going to start with the l right so local so it's going to go ahead and do the local search search in the local scope so it's going to search in the local scope and it's going to find y right Lo y which has the value uh, local y so it's going to go ahead and print that y because it exists within the local scope right so that's why we're getting that output and then if you out here you are printing uh we are printing the glow we are printing y so instead of is in here it's just going to go ahead and refer to this uh y that is within the same scope as this print statement and this is going to be this global y and that's where we're getting that output so that's how it works and in the second case let me just comment down this out let me just comment this out now and go explain to you this second part of the code right here and let's try to use the legb uh, to explain rule to explain this as well okay so uh in here you're calling this function you're calling a print statement so print x so it's going to look for x within this scope right here because x uh, the print statement and x exists in the same scope so it's just going to go ahead and refer to this x right as you expect it to okay good now we go into the function and you're trying to print x so it's going to start uh, from the local scope it's going to look within the local scope uh there's no x over there so it's going to look within the enclosing so so enclosing enclosing scope so enclosing after within the enclosing scope is going to go ahead and I'll, the enclosing scope uh, I'll, I'll explain to you later on but for now you can just know i can just tell for free, uh, that the enclosing scope does not exist here so it's going to look in the local scope for x and it's not going to find x within the local scope so it's going to go into the enclosing scope it's not going to find x within the enclosing scope i'll explain to you what the enclosing scope means uh, later on and then it's going to go ahead and look within the global scope so uh, is x defined within global within the global scope in this uh, in this code yeah x is x which is within the global scope because it's not within any block of course so this is a global scope so it's going to look within the global scope and it's going to find x in case x doesn't exist in the global scope it's going to go ahead and look within the built-in scope so built-in scope are just some built-in functions that python comes with by default so uh let me just explain to you again it's going to look within the local scope for x right this print statement is going to look within this block of code for x x doesn't exist it's going to look in the enclosing scope you don't have any enclosing scope at the moment here and then it's going to go ahead and look within the global scope and the global scope we have x here so it's going to go ahead and use this x and that's why it's going to go ahead and print global x and then finally if it doesn't exist in the global scope it's going to look within the uh, built-in scope that's basically how scopes work in python so to explain this this for uh to explain to you this even more further uh, you can even see the ids of this uh, information so let's just go ahead and simply uh print out the id instead so I can go ahead and simply print the ID of this. So the ID is just, if you say ID and then you pass in a variable, it's going to return to you the memory address of that specific variable. Okay. So I uh, just say uh, ID again so that you can know which uh which var which variable is being printed specifically. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this and uh, let's see how it works. So I'm going to go inside of my VS code and uh, in here we're just going to go ahead and print the ID of the variable X. So the ID is just basically the memory address of that variable. Okay, so let me just remove this print statement because we don't need it right now. And in this function, you're going to go ahead and print the ID of X, right? I'm going to print the ID of X as well, which is going to be the memory memory address of this variable or X. So let me just ask you, do you think that uh, this out print statement and this uh, print statement are going to give us the same output using the LGB, LEGB rule? So basically, you're printing out X, so it's going to search it within our local scope. It doesn't find X, so it's going to be in the enclosing scope. We don't have any enclosing scope here. So it goes within the global scope and looks for x so it find x in the, in the within the global enclosing scope so it's going to print the id of that x right basically that memory address of uh, the variable x so it's going to be basically uh it's going to go ahead and print that memory address so what my question is do you think the print statement here and this print statement up here are going to return to you the same value okay so using the legb rule so i'm just going to go ahead and run the code again now you can see we get the same memory address so uh now it explained that you can see now the lg legb rule is actually working because uh it looks with the global the local scope we don't find x it goes to the enclosing scope we don't have any enclosing scope here it goes within the local scope you find x here so it's going to use that x it's going to refer that memory address of that x so it's going to go ahead and print the memory address of that x whenever you call uh, the global x whenever you call this function right and also the here printing x which is going to refer to uh, the global x because uh, they're within the same uh, scope right the print statements are in the same scope so if i run the code again you see, see we have this uh this outputs right here the same memory address so good what if i have another variable missing saying x and x is going to be of type let's say um let's say x is going to be of, of string and you're going to go ahead and simply store in you're going to say local x so now uh if i run the code do you think this we're going to get the same output like the, uh, the memory addresses of this uh this the the function call and this print statement are they going to be the same 
right so again pause the video and try to use the legb uh, rule to explain this okay so i'm going to run the code again and i can know if i can tell for sure the memory addresses will be different so you can see memory address is actually different so uh the, the value that you're using in this function call is different from the value that you're losing you are using in here right there are two different variables in memory so how does it work again we go from the local scope if you're trying to call this function we go from the local scopes uh, you can actually start from here so we say print the id of x is just going to use the global x because the print statement and the x are within the same scope so it's just going to go ahead and use this x right here so you print the id of that x and if you call this function uh it's going, we're going to go inside of this block of code so instead of this block of code you're going to go ahead and try to uh, start from the local scope you start from the local scope so it's going to look for x within the local scope which is in this block of code so you find x already exists within this block of code uh within this block uh, of code so it, it, it's not going to, it's not going to go into the enclosing scope it's not going to go into the global scope or the built-in scope so it's immediately going to use this x that exists here and these are two different variables they are not the same variable they are two different variables and if you write, uh, if i show you the code again you can see even their memory addresses are different I mean there are two variables in different parts of the computer's memory so that's how uh, the lgb legb rule can be used to explain uh, scopes in python so good once we have a, a clear understanding of this now let's look at the global um uh, global variables within a scope so uh for example i had already told that this is this is called a, a local variable right a local variable within a local scope right so that's basically it so this uh, variable is called a local variable within a local scope and this one here is called a global variable because it's not within any scope right and uh, you can identify global variable because they start from the baseline of your code okay and then finally we're having in the built-in scope so the built-in scope these are basically python defined uh, values and we'll look at them just in a second so uh now let's imagine that uh i want to use let's say that i want to use this x within this variable uh within this function right here i don't want to go ahead and have another memory address with, an, with a different variable that is different from the global one how can i make sure that i can use this x whenever i say x i'm actually referring to this global x instead of the local x okay so how can i make sure that the local x is actually pointing to the global x so we can do that by using the global keyword so you can just say global uh global and then passing x what this sim this simply does is that whenever we are we are referring to the x within our local scope we are referring to the global uh, the x within the look the global local scope so what this simply does is that this uh this uh, local this this x here and uh, this one up here in the global scope are going to share the same memory address basically they're going to be the same variables so let me just go ahead and run the code again now you can see uh let me just go uh let me see where i made an error so uh it says that annotation uh x cannot be global so uh let me just see local x so i can't annotate this so let me just delete that annotation or this type hints so once i do that i just click the terminal and run the code again now you can see that this the the two variables uh global x and global y are different now in memory but basically pointing to the same value so if i go up up here and just delete this right here and uh, let me just delete this so now i print I, I print out just x itself not the id of x just x itself uh let me just print out x so I print out x here so what do you think the output of this code is going to be right are you going to say global x or something else so let me just go ahead and print the code right here and if i print the code you're getting global x right so good uh that works perfectly so now let me just go ahead and delete this part of the code and down here i'm going to go ahead and simply do a print okay i'm going to say print and i'm going to print x so before i print x i want to call the function first and this function what i'm going to do i'm going to update x i'm going to say x is going to be uh let's say local x so now if i run the code again what do you think the output is going to be are we going to get a local x in this case and then get a global x in this case or what is the output going to be right just pause the code the code and think about it but before you before you even start thinking about it one thing i can tell you uh, let me just tell you this is that since you have used the you have said that global x meaning that whatever we do to this x value here we are actually doing it to the global x and that's what the global keyword does it's just saying that whatever value is within the local scope that has the same name as a value within the outer scope you are referring to the value within the uh, global scope rather basically at the outer scope so if i go ahead and run the code again now you can see local x and uh, local uh, local x right so good and what if i bring it down this function down after if i run the code again what do you think we'll get we'll get global x and local uh, local x and the reason being because before we call this function x was still global x but after you call this function that is when you're going to update x to local x and if you do the update it's also going to go ahead and affect the the global scope as well uh, the, the global x as well so if i go ahead 
and copy and paste it right here so this is before we updated the global value uh, value within the this function scope the local scope and after this is after we have updated the the the, the global function within the local scope so now it should be log, global x local x and local x good so uh, everything works as we expect that's how that you can use the legb rule to explain our uh, scopes in python okay good okay so once we have that done i want to go ahead and simply uh show you the built-in functions in python so i'm just going to go ahead and delete all this code right here and the built-in functions you can you look at the built-in function you just we can just import uh built-ins uh in python so once you have built-ins import you can simply do a print and print a dir and dir is just going to go ahead and return to uh the different uh, directory and different stuff about it the built-in in, ins that are available in python so the built-ins are just a bunch of uh, global uh, built-in functions that are within the built-in scope that python provides us so we have talked about the global scope like the local scope rather we've talked about the global scope now talking about the built-in scope the enclosing scope we'll look at it just in a second so if i go ahead and run the code you can see all these functions are within the the built-in scope within python right so if if i go ahead even uh, there's even the print statement right here, if i can find it the print statement is also uh, it's also a part of the Python uh, globe built-in scope. Okay, so what? How? For example, if I'm calling this print statement, there is no way in my code that I define this print statement. So what Python is going to do is to look within the global scope, the local scope. Rather, we don't have a local scope in this case, and then Python is going to go ahead and look within the enclosing scope. We don't have an enclosing scope, so Python is going to go ahead and look within the global scope. Uh, we don't have any global scope so python is going to go ahead and look within the built-in scope and the built-in scope print is defined so it's going to find print within the uh, the built-in scope and simply use that print even here dir also within the built-in uh, the built-in scope in python and you can find all of that information right here like we have you have to look take a look at some uh, map and uh, sorry maximum minimum and all of that you did uh, to other tutorials you have look at tuples type all this all these are within the global scope in python even uh, even if you look close, you can find the print right here. So if I uh, take a look close, you can even find dictionary. Uh, okay, you can find all. Yeah, even here is a print. So the print is in the global Python scope. So if you're calling the print function, uh, you're going to go ahead and simply look in the local scope. You don't have a local scope and close. You don't have a closing scope. The global scope, you don't have a print uh, function defined here. So it's going to take the print function from the built-in scope. And that's how you can look at the different values from the built-in scope. Okay okay so to even demonstrate this to you more or less then just go ahead and simply uh i can comment this out so uh we have this function called uh we have this called float if i go in here you can look if you look for, for float uh float uh b after b you're going to go to c and then c d and then f so float should be around here yeah this is float right here so for float is part of the built-in uh built-in scope within python right so uh, let me just go ahead and override this and let's see what the 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 statement is going to say just go ahead and say print and i'm going to go ahead and print three so if i go ahead and run the code we're just going to get three right so let me change this three to be a float so change it to a float you have to talk about type conversions in python so you can just do this and change it to a float type so once i do that i can run the code we get 3.0 that's true that's a float right so if i run the code again we get 3.0 good now what if i go ahead and say i simply say def and i define i say float and this is going to be a, an empty function this is going to go ahead and say pass for now and i'm going to go ahead and simply copy this function and use it down here as well so let me just comment this out for now so once i, I use it down here i'm just going to run the code again so now you can see we are getting an error because how why does the error happen it says that the, uh, let me just go in here it says that float takes in zero positional argument but one was passed because this function takes in zero positional argument but uh, one was passed which is this three right here so we are defining the, the function called scope ourselves. So what Python is going to do is going to look within the local scope. We don't have a local scope. It's going to look within the closing scope. We don't have an enclosing scope. It's going to look within the global scope of our, of our Python code. And the global scope, we have float defined in here. So it's going to try to use this float function rather than um, rather than rather than this uh built-in scope so the pattern is going to go into the built-in scope it's going to stop in the global scope because in the global scope we have float defined and this function for now for example you can even do just a print statement so just say print and they say x and you're going to take in x so you can pass in x it is going to go ahead and print that x so uh, that's all we're going to do so if i run the code we should just get print uh print x right that's basically it and it returns none basically so that's how 
uh, you can change the, the and modify values but be very careful and not uh, avoid modifying functions that are using the built in scope in python because you can get an error so for example if i just define uh, divide this function and just say simply pass and a person who is writing uh, working with this code and is used to the built in functions in python right the built in scope functions in python and he's trying to use float python is simply going to go in the local scope not find float and closing not find scope and go in the global and find float rather right? Uh, when, when, when this function basically does something totally different from what is defined within the uh, built-in uh, scope within Python. So the person can be confused. So avoid overriding functions within the global scope. This, so this is just overriding the function within the global scope because we have defined in the global, so within the built-in scope. Because you have defined in the global scope, so Python is never going to reach the built-in scope looking for it because it's going to find that find the function already within the uh, global scope. So over avoid overriding functions within uh, within the local within the within the 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 built-in scope so you can just keep take a look at all these functions again uh, these are all the functions avoid like overriding all these functions right and all these uh, variables and stuff like that just avoid uh, overriding them so these are just python inbuilt stuff so kindly kindly just avoid overriding them avoid naming your functions with these uh, same uh, names that you see in here so yeah that's how uh, scope works so now you have understand uh, how the built-in scope works so you look at global scope the, the sorry the local scope the enclosing scope and the built-in scope now let's take a look at the enclosing scope so enclosing scope exists when you have a function instead of another function so let me just delete all of this for now uh we have a function called def we're going to call it outer i'm just call it outer uh, underscore func right here and this outer func i'm going to have y and i'm going to call it outer uh y Okay, outer y and this is going to be of type string so uh, again the type notations are of type annotations are not compulsory i'm going to have the inner function inner uh, inner underscore func right here so in the inner func i'm going to have y right here oh let me just do something just print out y and then let me call this function right here so i'm going to call the the outer function okay and the outer function you're going to also go ahead and call the inner function within the outer function so call this and then simply also print uh let me just pray print and then i'm going to go ahead and print y so let me call the outer function so outer function just like this so if i call this outer function it's going to go in here and call the inner function and also do a print of y so what do you think y is going to be is this going to be outer what's what's, what's the output of y whenever you call the inner function so let me just go ahead and run the code again clear the terminal run the code we get outer y and outer y okay so how why does this happen okay let me go here and just let's say y equals to let me just say global uh let me just say global uh global global y so i have the global y also up here so i have the uh, i have the uh this y within the uh, the outer function and also have another uh inner uh, inner function within the another function so if have, we have a function within another function is called enclosing scope the enclosing scope scope concept applies in here so if you're printing y what's going to go what's going to go ahead and happen so again we use the leg rule. so python is going to look within the local scope of this specific function it's not going to find y within that local scope so it's going to go into its enclosing scope right which is which is this the this and this scope right here with the, the, the outer function right and it's going to go in the outer function and look for y is it going to find y yeah y already exists so it's just going to use that y right here and that's why we are getting uh outer y okay now what if i have my own y in here and just say um this is uh let's say inner y so if i have inner y what do you think is going to happen right python is going to go ahead we want to print y python is going to look within the local scope right and find y and it's just going to go ahead and use y immediately right so it's not going to go within the enclosing scope so let me just run the code again so you can see we have outer inner y and then outer because we are calling this function and then printing out y right so because we are printing out y and this print statement exists within the same scope as this y so it's just going to go ahead and use this y okay okay good so once we have that done uh learn, now do you have understand how uh enclosing and scope works right so it's going to look within the inner scope if it doesn't find it sorry within the local scope if it doesn't find it it's going to go into the enclosing scope which is just a function uh, like a function and close another function and if it doesn't find it that it's going to go within the lock the global scope so now, now, let me just go ahead and delete let me just comment this part out for now and also comment this out right now so we are printing out y so python is going to need to look for y so it's going to start from the local scope we don't have a y within this local scope so it's going to go into enclosing scope which is the scope right here 
uh, in this scope we don't have y either so python is going to go into enclosing scope and then enclosing scope is going to define y and it's going to use global y so all these functions should return to us a global y so if i run it we should get back a global y so that's how the legb rule can be uh, legb rule can be used to understand scopes in python right it's actually very intuitive to understand once you know uh, there how the rule works so that's basically it so once we now we are printing the inner uh, we, are, uh, we have the inner inner white inner white defined right you are trying to call this function inner uh inner, inner function so it's going to go in here it's, okay i need to print y let's look for where y is so y is going to start from the local scope yeah we have y in the local scope so we need to turn inner y and then that function call will be done right so and it's going to go in here and then look for print y so it's going to look within the local scope because it's within, it's within the same uh, scope as this so it's local to this function right it's going to look within the local scope we don't have it so it's going to go ahead and look within the uh, and we don't have any enclosing scope no function encloses this other function so it's going to look within the global scope and it's going to find y and it's going to use that y instead so if i go ahead and run the code we should now get inner y and local global y right so that's how the legb uh, can rule can be used to understand scopes in python so i i hope this uh, clears a lot of uh, stuff for you now let's say that uh, i have the local y right here define right and uh, i want to modify the local the the outer y the outer y variable inside of my function right here because if i define another y in here it's going to treat as a different variable so how can i make sure that i'm whenever i'm referring to this one right here i'm actually referring to the y within the inner scope right with so within the enclosing scope right and not the global scope so uh we can do that if what if you go ahead and simply say global x so if i say global and then say global y so which variable will, will will we be referring to whenever i say global y so let me just go ahead and print y after this function call so print i'm going to go ahead and print y so if i call this function it's going to go in here and call the inner function the inner function is going to refer to the global variable and change it to be uh, inner y so if i print a uh, y in here it's going to go ahead and look for the global y because on the same scope so again this global y has been updated to inner y so let's run the code and let's see what we get again we get back inner y right so good so how do I, how can i refer to let's say that i don't want to refer the global variable out here i want to refer to the enclosing variable out in here right so how do i do that and that's why we have another another uh, keyword in python called the non-local non-local so what non-local does is that we are referring whenever we, we want to refer to a, a variable in the enclosing scope we use the inner y whenever i want to refer to the global scope we use the global keyword so we want to refer to the value within the inner within the scope enclosing scope which is within this scope right here right we want to refer to that y within this scope right here and not the global y so we can use the non-local y so if i run the code again this should return to us global y this print statement should return to us global y and this statement should return to us inner y because we are updating the y within we are updating this uh enclosing y within this function and you're calling this function before this print statement so this should have been updated by the time we reach, we reach this line so if i go ahead and run the code again we get back inner y inner y and then the global y from here because we, we didn't uh, actually modify the global y so that's how uh, scopes work in python and i hope that the legb rule can help you explain scope in python how scoping works in python again always refer to the lgbe rule for trying to understand understand scopes in python this will has helped me a ton to understand uh, scopes in python and how different stuff works so we start from uh, python starts from looking within the global the local scope if it doesn't find the variable definition the variable defined definition it goes within the enclosing scope if it exists look for the variable definition if it doesn't find it with the global scope uh, if it doesn't find it and then it finally goes into the built-in scope right so if if it goes into the built-in scope and still doesn't find it that's when at uh, the point you get an error so for example i have uh, if i'm trying to print x and x doesn't exist in the local scope uh python will go to the enclosing scope x does not exist L global scope x does not exist and the built-in scope x does not exist then you get an error so that's how uh scoping works in python and that's how you can use uh this to understand how scopes work in python yeah that's all for this video again if you guys enjoyed the video so far make sure that you like the video you share you subscribe to the youtube channel and share this content with anyone who you think might find it helpful thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one keep safe